Hi, everyone. We're about to get started. My name is Sarah Mann. And I'm Carla Rentschler. And we both work with the Global Forest Watch website and community. So we're going to be going through today a focus instead on our usual webinar, which takes us through all the different applications and the different tools on the map. We're just going to be focused on the, our newest product, which are the weekly GLAD alerts. And so before we get into the alerts themselves, I want to give a little bit of an overview of what to expect today. Uh, we'll be going through a few different sections of the website and the tools, but after each section, we'll give an opportunity to ask questions. And what you're going to see is if you're logged in online, a questions box where you can type in any question you have during the presentation. So as we go along, feel free to type those in there in the question box. And after each, each section, we'll pause and we'll look at whatever's come up and answer them vocally. Uh, if we don't get to any of the questions during the webinar, then we will um, actually go back afterwards and write out um, more extensive answers, and you will receive that in the follow-up email after the webinar ends. Uh, and that will actually be posted to the Global Forest Watch discussion forum. So if you're not part of the discussion forum, we highly encourage you to join. That's where the question and answers will be if we don't get to them. But for today, I'd like to start out with a little bit of the basics. So if you're unfamiliar with the Global Forest Watch website, this is our home page. You can scroll down and see the interactive map, our country profiles and rankings, our different apps, and our ways to get connected. Of course, there are many more features and ways to get connected throughout the website, but what we're going to be focusing on today is the interactive map. So to start out, what automatically pops up is our annual tree cover loss and tree cover gain data set. And you can see here on the legend any data that's being shown on the map, what kind of canopy density is being shown, and information windows if you have further questions about the data. Now, this product that you're seeing, pink is loss, blue is gain, together areas with high levels of change make purple. But this is all derived from satellite imagery and algorithms that were developed by the University of Maryland, the GLAD lab. And so even though this is our annual product and this sort of measures tree cover loss over time, we also have several alert systems that recognize new tree clearings as they happen. And so if you go to the menu, these are where all of our extra data sets are if you're not familiar. And our forest change menu will show you what I was just talking about, as well as the alerts that I mentioned. So we have Grand Chaco deforestation, we have Protus, we have Forma, but what we're focusing on today are the GLAD alerts created from that same lab at the University of Maryland. And what sets the annual product apart from the alerts is actually their frequency. So as I said, tree cover loss, when we click here, is showing annually what's happening. And you can look down at the time slider and press play and see year by year where tree cover loss is growing around the world. You can also do analysis on any given area, which we will show in a minute. You can zoom in and out on these buttons. You can share your view of the map. It'll give you a quick link to wherever and however you are looking at the map. And you can search any area in the world, or you can take away and hide the windows that appear if you want to take a clean screenshot. There's also contextual data, but again, today we're not going to go into that quite yet. But I'm going to hand it over to Carla, who's going to give you more of an in-depth introduction to the GLAD alerts themselves. So like Sarah said, the difference between the annual product and the alert system is generally that the annual product has a higher resolution and measures the total hectares of loss and gain that occur, whereas the alert products are more intended to pinpoint areas where clearing has taken place. So they're usually measured at a much lower resolution, generally around 250 or 500 meters. But what sets the GLAD alerts apart is that they're actually measured at the same resolution as the annual data. So the GLAD alerts use a similar methodology and they're updated every eight days. This allows for near real-time monitoring. So they're both at a higher resolution and a higher frequency than any existing alert products. 
So you can find the GLAD alerts under the forest change data. The geographic coverage currently only is for Peru, the Republic of Congo, and Kalimantan in Indonesia. These are three pilot areas, and they were selected to span different types of forest cover and different levels of deforestation. So in Peru, deforestation is much more spread out, whereas in Republic of Congo and Kalimantan, it's much more dense forest. So this is a way for the University of Maryland to test detecting different types of tree cover loss. And the way that these alerts work is that every time a new cloud-free Landsat image becomes available, it's compared to the last three years of images for that area. And it gets flagged as an alert if more than 50% of a pixel is lost. And so a pixel, again, is 30 meter by 30 meter square. And the canopy density for this data set is set to 60% automatically because the University of Maryland GLAD team wanted to pick up loss in very densely forested areas. And the geographic coverage is actually planned to expand across the tropics by the end of this year. So keep checking back if you're interested in monitoring forests in different countries than the three that are currently available. As far as the accuracy for the GLAD alerts, the GLAD lab team did a validation study in Peru and found only 13.5% false positives. Um, and most of those errors are actually right on the edges of other areas of tree cover loss. So if you isolate those false positives to areas that are not near other areas of forest clearing, the false positive actually drops to only 4%. So they're pretty accurate. And they're actually designed to be more careful than the annual product. So they're trying to avoid false positives. I'm going to show you a couple of examples now to kind of illustrate how these work. We're going to go to Kalimantan first. And I'm just pulling up the country data here in this panel because we'll be combining that with the GLAD alerts later to see kind of what's going on. So right away, you can see that there's a lot of GLAD alerts across Kalimantan. Um, and currently, it's showing January 2015 to March 9th, which is the last date that it was updated. Uh, the team is actually updating it currently. So if you check back later today, you'll see this data available for the last two weeks. And this calendar shows you, it lets you select dates that you want to view on the map. And all of the dates that have a green dot underneath are a detection date. So there's other dates that don't have any, go to uh, February, for example. There's dates that don't have a dot underneath, and those just mean that the GLAD alerts were working at that time. They just didn't detect any loss. So we're going to set this for the most recent date, as well as we're going to make this January of 2016. So we can see even in the last three months, there's still a lot of loss happening across Kalimantan. And we're interested in the recent alerts. So any of alerts of the alerts that you see in this yellow color, which I can show you better with the dark base map, are categorized as recent. And that means that they're, they belong to the last week of detection, so from the last eight days. We're interested in this one particular area where you can see there's actually a lot of yellow. So this means there was a lot of clearing at the beginning of March. I'm going to change this back to default. So now we can start to think about why there might be this huge area of clearing happening. And if we turn on some of the layers that of the other data sets we have available for Indonesia, you can actually start to tell a story about what might be happening. So this is interesting. This is actually a forest moratorium area. And in 2011, the Indonesian government passed a moratorium halting new forest concessions in areas that are rich in peat and primary forest so that it had time to come up with better land use planning policies. And that moratorium means that they can't grant any new concessions in these areas. And it was actually renewed in 2015. But here we see that this area, which was designated in 2011, actually has a lot of loss occurring. And if we turn on some other layers, like the primary forest layer, you can see why this was selected as a moratorium area. 
and also that it's pretty problematic that all of these GLAD alerts are happening in this area. So we can now use our analysis tool to get to kind of quantify what we're seeing. So you can, there's several different ways to do an analysis on GLAD alerts. You can either draw a shape or upload a, a file, so your own data that you have. But we're gonna start drawing in this case. So let's say we just want to see how much, how many GLAD alerts are actually occurring in this area. If we run that analysis, the analysis tool has shown us that there was almost 50,000 GLAD tree cover loss alerts in just this one area of primary forest. And each of those alerts indicates that 50% of one 30 by 30 meter square was lost. So this is a pretty sizable area. And if we're interested in following what might be happening in this area in the future, we actually have a new feature where you can subscribe to an area that you've analyzed on the map through our new MyGFW login. So you can log in to GFW using a Twitter, Facebook, or Google account for now. So I'm just gonna log in with our GFW Twitter account, for example. So now you can see up here, we're logged in to MyGFW. Say pick this area to subscribe to. And you just enter an email address and you get to name your subscription. So I'm gonna call this Glad Alerts in Kalimantan Primary Forest and save it. And then you'll get an email notification that asks you to confirm your subscription. One other thing you can do with GLAD alerts, you can actually combine it with the EarthCast uh, high resolution satellite imagery feature. And so we're gonna set this to, let's say July of 2015. And we actually see that there's a lot of fires happening in this area, which is very common in Indonesia and usually happens around areas that have plantations on them. So if you zoom in to the EarthCast imagery, you can actually see that a lot of this primary forest has been turned into plantations. I'm just gonna set this back to January. You can see that there's a lot of new GLAD alerts just from the beginning of March in this last little area of primary forest left in this forest moratorium area. So now I'm gonna show you just another example. We're gonna to go to the Republic of Congo. And right away we see there's this interesting area where there's a lot of GLAD alerts. And if we do an analysis on this area, similar to what we did before, we can quantify this. So. There's actually over 80,000 GLAD alerts picked up just from January to March. And what this actually was, was a giant wildfire that happened in February. There was unprecedented wildfires throughout Central Africa. And a little bit north of here, we see something else that's interesting. This network of alerts actually looks like a road and if we turn on our Congo Basin logging roads data set, we see that this is actually an extension of existing logging roads that the GLAD alerts have picked up on. So this, the, these uh, logging roads were documented as uh, occurring between 2010 and 2012 and the pink GLAD alerts show that they've actually expanded quite a bit between January and March of this year. So this is an example of how precisely the GLAD alerts pick up on what's going on. We can use some of our other data layers to get a better idea of how this might be impacting the forest 
And you can see this is all intact forest area. So the lighter green color is already degraded primary forest, and this darker green is actually still intact forest as of 2013. So these GLAD alerts are picking up new logging roads expanding into still intact forests. And if you were interested, you could then, again, draw a shape around this area and subscribe to it to receive email notifications when new alerts appear. So you could actually monitor the expansion of these logging roads. And I think those are the two examples that we wanted to share with you today. But Sarah is going to go into a little bit more of the use cases for what you can actually do with these GLAD alerts. Now that you've had a pretty comprehensive overview of how the data is generated, how the alerts work, and how you can subscribe to get alerts as recently as every week, we are working with a few different groups around the world who are actively using the alerts to monitor forests in their own countries. So for instance, the Amazon Conservation Association, ACA, they're using the GLAD alerts to determine hotspots in Peru. So let me go back to Peru. And what they're doing is because these alerts come out every week, they can keep a really close eye on what's happening in pretty remote forests of the Andean Amazon, places where previously they would have had to wait up to a year to get this sort of high resolution alert or um, see what sort of change is happening in areas where people can't actually, um, can't actually walk through the forest and see what's happening. So what they've done is they use these alerts to keep an eye on protected areas or intact forests when a lot of alerts are popping up. Then what they've done is they've looked into satellite imagery to see what exactly is happening on the ground. So if we zoom into Peru, you can see sometimes there are little clusters in the Amazon area. I'm going to turn on a different base map so you can kind of get a better sense of where the forests are. But basically what they've been doing is using the alerts as indications of where there's actually loss happening as soon as a week after they occur. What the Amazon Conservation Association is doing is using them as sort of exclamation points. So because even though they're very high accuracy, they still want to use them as an indication of where change is happening right now. And that's actually where we really see the value of the GLAD alerts is that because these are some of the most near real-time alert products that exist in the world at such a fine resolution of 30 by 30 meters. Like Carla mentioned, most of our alert products that previously existed were as much as 250 square meters, which if you're on the ground walking through the field or walking through the forest, that can be a pretty difficult area to confirm on the ground. You're not really sure where you are through the trees. But 30 by 30 meters gives you incredible accuracy. So we see these as being a great indication of seeing near real-time deforestation and being able to track that and actually pre prevent it before it happens. And what Amazon Conservation Association is doing is once they get that satellite imagery, some of which you can even find through Global Forest Watch, is they're talking to their local representatives and showing them exactly where this is occurring, giving them the proof through satellite imagery and alert products and um, talking to them about creating better protection in these national parks or in these intact forests. Another group that we're working with in Peru is the SPDA, and they're also using our near real-time data and looking at areas where they've drawn boundaries around um, protected areas so that whenever there's a GLAD alert in that boundary that they've drawn using the analysis tool that Carla showed, um, they get an email in their inbox and those private protected area managers work with the SPDA, a civil society group, to actually monitor their forests and make sure that there are no incursions because there, this is protected property. And the third one that we're working with is ProForest. And we've been watching ProForest monitor zero deforestation supply chain commitments. So in areas like Kalimantan, Indonesia, which we showed on the map, you know, there's moratorium areas where tree cover loss should not be happening, where deforestation is not allowed. And there's peat heavy forests, which mean that they're incredibly carbon rich. And so groups like ProForest, we've been watching them use the GLAD alerts 
to monitor these areas with palm oil companies on the ground. And what they're doing is using the alerts to encourage them to ensure that their concessions remain deforestation free. So if we're able to see that sort of tree cover loss on the map and see where forests previously existed, like our intact forest landscapes or our primary forest data in Indonesia, then groups like ProForest can confirm that none of the tree cover loss in a concession is leaking out into an intact forest, or that if forests are previously existing in that concession, then they can make sure to work around it. Palm oil is a huge problem with deforestation in Indonesia. And so these sorts of fine resolution and high frequency alerts mean that we're not waiting year to year or month to month to see what happened on the ground. You can see it in a week's time. And so one thing that we're really excited about is, as Carla mentioned, this is a pilot set at the moment. And although we're very excited about these three regions of the world that have these alerts, we're even more excited to see them expand pantropically. So we encourage you to play with the data as is in areas like Peru, Republic of Congo, and Kalimantan, but also keep an eye out for as they become available for the rest of the tropics, because we see these as being a huge game changer in fighting deforestation around the world and for protecting areas and better managing forests. So whether or not it's the GLAD alerts or another deforestation alert product, those we trust just as well. We encourage you to create subscription areas. You can literally draw any shape on the map and subscribe to alerts. You'll get an email in your inbox the second they arise. Uh, you can upload custom areas if that's what you have in your pocket. So say if you have on your computer a, an area of biodiversity that you're monitoring or a specific concession that you're keeping an eye on, you can literally drag that onto the GFW map and see if any alerts occurred inside and subscribe to those alerts thereafter. So the whole My GFW feature is a real game changer as well. And whether or not it's in Peru or the areas where the GLAD alerts are available, we do have here under the forest change menu bar plenty of other alert systems that you can open up the information windows and see exactly where they cover and what how they're developed and whether or not that's tailored to your needs. One moment, we're going to show you a little bit more about the login feature. Just something that I forgot to point out earlier is that once you have subscriptions, you can access all of those up here in the My GFW button. So if you click on My Subscriptions, it brings up all of the areas that you've subscribed to. And this is currently only active for the Global Forest Watch interactive map, but will soon expand to be integrated with the mm -hmm. other applications on GFW, like GFW Fires and Commodities. So you could actually have multiple subscriptions to fire alert data sets, as well as these GLAD alerts. And the reason that this has a yellow triangle on it currently is because we haven't confirmed this subscription. But from here, you can rename the subscription, view it on the map again, or delete it. And we also encourage you, if you do make subscriptions, to fill out a profile on GFW. And this helps us to understand how you're using the data so that we can better adjust the website to meet your needs. None of this data is required, but it helps us to understand how you're using it. And there's also an option to sign up to become a GFW tester, which lets us test new features with you. So we set up user testing sessions periodically, as well as a way to sign up for our newsletter to get the latest alerts about new data set, new features, and other research and updates from GFW. So we do hold webinars once a month, and although this one focused mainly on the GLAD alerts, we also have other webinars that focus on GFW fires, GFW climate, GFW commodities, as well as a comprehensive overview of the website. So if you have any other questions, stay tuned for more webinars, or sign up for the newsletter, or even feel free to email us. We're always interested in hearing from our community, and whether it's being a user tester or giving us feedback after our webinar through the survey that we will send you, you know, we are creating these tools to be as useful as possible to you, the people who are using the data. 
So of course, you are part of our community and feel free to keep actively engaged and stay in touch. We really appreciate those who came out today. Okay, so there's a question about the fuel pellet industry in the southern U.S. So for the GLAD alerts, we're focusing on the tropics because that seems to be an area where deforestation is happening in forests that are very high carbon content. And when we are talking about deforestation, that is taking away forests and replacing it with another land use. And actually, when you go not to the GLAD alerts, but to the forest change data of tree cover gain and tree cover loss that automatically appear on the map, you can see these areas, some of them are just plain pink, some of them are just plain blue, but some have a very deep purple, and that's areas with high amounts of change. And so one thing that we're aware of is that in the south, southeast U.S., there is a lot of loss and gain happening at the same time because for industries like fuel pellets, as was mentioned in the question box, or for general logging practices that are actually quite old in this region, there's a lot of very small plots that are locally managed where people are growing trees, cutting down trees, growing trees, cutting down trees, but it is sort of an agricultural system. And so because that's not necessarily deforestation where mass areas are being wiped out and replaced with things like palm oil or cattle, it will show up as purple on the map. And there's another question about downloading the GLAD alert data, and that's a great question and something we forgot to mention earlier, but you can actually download the GLAD alerts directly from the GFW map. So just for example, in an area in Peru, whenever you do an analysis, there's an option to then download data for that area. So if we just draw a little area anywhere and analyze it, then there's a button at the bottom to download and export the data. So for example, you can open it in CardoDB, you could download other data files and then use them in other WebGIS programs. So just for example, if we open it in CardoDB, it brings up uh, the GLAD alerts for the date and the area that you selected on the map. And all of our data is also available on the Open Data Portal, which you can find on the homepage or um, on the top of the Global Forest Watch website in a menu. So if it doesn't show up immediately when you draw an area or create a shape, or if you open a shape file on the map, such as a protected area or a concession, you can actually also go into our Open Data Portal where all of our data is available and search by data type, by location, all those things. So in CardoDB, you can now see all of these orange dots. And so each of those represents one GLAD alert. So one pixel where, one 30 by 30 meter pixel where uh, more than 50% loss has been detected. So you can then reuse that data or use it with other types of data sets. So yeah, it is possible to download the data. Um, and we also didn't mention this type of analysis or subscription, but you can actually analyze and subscribe to the other data sets that we have. So if there's a protected area that you're monitoring or if you're interested in monitoring a specific mining concession, you can actually just click on that shape on the map and then analyze and subscribe to it. Well, thank you everyone for for showing up. We really appreciate it and we hope you found this as useful as possible. Like we said, if you have any questions, feel free to email gfw at wri.org. It's also on the website if you don't have a pen. Um, we do hold webinars once a month for various parts of the website and we will be following up this webinar with an email uh, showing all of the resources, including a video recording. So if you were having connectivity issues like we were for this webinar, we apologize, but all of it will be available for watching at a later date. Thank you again, and we hope to see you again soon.